Breeding special heads, welcome back to another episode of Automation Definitely Not Replicas. And today, what well, we're actually going to build a little bit together today. And uh, I've already built a Ford Transit from the early 90s, aesthetically. And uh, we're going to build the engine together. And this is going to be a speed build again. I want this thing to reach over 300 kilometers per hour. And uh, with uh, how aerodynamic this car is, or rather isn't, um, it might be a little bit difficult, to say the least. So uh, let's put an engine together. I just uh, put a, I just threw a uh, an engine in there temporarily, just so we have a model to start working on. Okay, can we fit a V12? Yeah, probably not. Okay, so let's go with. Should we go with a V8, like a crossplane or a flat plane V8? Let's make it a crossplane V8. You know, Ford is American and whatnot. And uh, although they have built um, a flat plane V8 in the most recent, uh, like GT350 and GT350R. Uh, I don't have any details on it, engine. I, I didn't look it up. I w I'm not prepared for that. So, uh, in any case, you know what? Let's let's do it. let's do it anyway. Let's uh, pretend that we're just gonna be building an upsized version of that um, engine. It is gonna have uh, four wheels per cylinder, and let's make it like. Um, 991 stroke and then go up with the bore so we can get up to like 97.5 let's make it a five and a half liter sure again i don't know an important stroke from from the ford engine but that doesn't matter and that doesn't matter anyway let's just give it a five and a half liter we need a lot of power, is what I'm getting at, in order to make this uh, fridge of a car reach 300 kilometers an hour. So we will need a pretty aggressive cam and VVL profile. And by the way, um, yesterday or you know a, a few days ago, I, I've watched um, Engineering Explains video about. Uh, Ford's, um, you know, valve te technology that they use on the uh, up upcoming facelift of the Mustang GT. And then I realized, uh, you know, they're doing that in order to, uh, in order to improve emissions and also uh, fuel economy. However, the car still doesn't have direct injection. And, and that's what gets me, like, why why does it not have direct injection? You can't really argue that, you know, direct injection is expensive. Yeah, but developing a, a, a new, like, valve system isn't, or what? Like, what? Why does it not have direct injection? That's, that's the one... That's that's the elephant in the room. That's, that's the one thing I really don't understand about the new Mustang GT, why does it still not have direct injection? It's just... Every car these days has it. It's, it's, it's gonna improve not only like emissions and economy, it's also gonna improve performance. So it's, it's like you get the best of all, uh, you get the best of everything by using it rather than uh, multiple injection. Like what? I have no idea. So we are gonna be having a rough first setup here obviously we're gonna be increasing the boost because 567 horsepower is not gonna be enough so let's go up here um, hmm much higher AR ratio yep we will also increase the rev limit 
we got a little bit of half float, but that's still okay. Remember, this engine is gonna go into a transit. So yeah, that's that's what we're building right now. I could, I mean, not only that I could, I, uh, I actually have also already tried putting the uh, the 370Z engine in here with the 850 horsepower. It did not get me to 300 kilometers an hour, so we need more power than that. Um, right. 1.35 bars of boost. Eight seventy four, eight seventy, eight seventy seven. So that's too much. Okay. I mean, eight hundred and seventy is not going to be enough by any means. Let, but let's just see where that would take us. Oh, actually, we need more cooling. So in any case, we need bigger vents. You know what? Let's actually... Put on some of these on the sides. Everybody's gonna laugh at you. If, if, if this was your van, if this was your transit, everybody would laugh at you. Well, wh wh what are these things on the side of your car? Did you steal those from a Lamborghini... Uh, Gallardo and 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 you would be like yeah why not and then they they would look under the bonnet and and it's like wait what what's that engine and then you would floor it and it is just it it would just destroy whatever it is that they're driving what it did get us to 300 kilometers an hour um Right. That's weird. We also have a rally style gearbox in here. Let's get a diff. 3.1 seconds, 0 to 100 in a transit. Quarter mile time off. Eleven point one. Any further questions? I don't think. I, I don't think so. Yeah, three hundred kilometers an hour in a transit. Only took a five and a half liter twin turbo uh, flat plane V eight with eight hundred and seventy horsepower. Right. Awesome. And, I mean, t apart from these things, you couldn't really tell from the outside, like, that this car would be so fast. Like, who would think that this car is, like, quite a bit faster over the quarter mile than, say, a, a current generation Viper? <laughs> like, y you'd never expect that. It's uh, it's it, it's also not economical though. That's one thing that it isn't. It's economical. It would do well in muscle car segment. What? Excuse me. Can we actually lower the zero to hundred time? No, we cannot by uh, adjusting your power distribution. In any case, wait, did that make a difference over the quarter mile?
it's well, one hundred for the second. In any case, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.